It's amazing how much processing power you can get in a mini PC these days, but many fall flat because of what I like to call top tier struggle. No, it's not the name of an 80s glamour rock band. I'm talking about the struggle in removing the heat generated by these top tier CPUs in such small boxes, which often means a lot of fan noise or thermal throttling to cope. Well, I'm chuffed to say that the Minis Forum NAB9 does much better than most. In fact, so much better, colour me aroused. I mean, impressed. More after this message. Are you looking for a way to safely and quickly transfer files and apps to a new PC? Well, say hello to Ease Us To Do PC Trans, a simple to use app that can help you transfer programs from one PC to another or create a full backup of your computer. Try it for free with the link in the video description. The Minis Forum NAB9 is a little bigger than your average mini PC and features a premium metal chassis allowing for some shot put action, <laughs> while the top and bottom lids are plastic. Looks wise, this one's definitely a step up above previous efforts. I like it, and it does feel very solid in the hands. None of that plastic creak seen in some previous units. If I was going to complain about something, it's the plastic at the bottom, which looks and feels subpar but obviously isn't a big deal when it's sitting on a desk. Inside the NAB9 is Intel's i9-12900HK CPU, a flagship from yesteryear with 14 cores, 20 threads, and Iris XE graphics. One cool thing about Mini's Forum Mini PCs is that most, if not all of them, are available in a bare bones option, for those that prefer to throw in their own memory, storage, and OS. That would be me. And the $359 US dollar price tag for the bare bones is very attractive, as is the price for the memory, storage, OS combo when compared to other 12th or 13th gen Intel Minis. So what does it come with? Well, Minis Forum was the first company to introduce GAN power supplies and I'm happy to see the trend continue, with a smallish 120 watt power brick included along with a power cord, HDMI, SATA expansion cable, 2.5 inch drive screws, and modern amount. The ports are interesting, a mix of higher end features and one major cutback, which you might be able to guess. There's a digital microphone hole, a five gigabit USB-C, which only supports data, dual USB 3, 10 gigabit, 3.5 millimeter audio jack, and a clear CMOS button. The back has another two USB 3, 10 gigabit ports, dual HDMI 2.0, dual Intel 2.5 gigabit LAN, and a couple of USB-C ports. One only supports display out, and the other is a full featured USB port with display, data, and power delivery. I did test it with my USB-C monitor, which can only output 75 watts and isn't enough for this mini. But the NAB9 did turn on and display before powering off. So that's enough to make sure it's working. So what's missing from a top tier Intel mini like this? Well, that would be 40 gigabit USB 4, aka Thunderbolt 4. Obviously a deal breaker if you need it, but if you're not planning to hook up an eGPU, fancy capture card, or other Thunderbolt device, it's not a problem. In any case, I think it would have been nice to have at least one USB 4 with a slightly higher price tag. Even without it, you'll still be able to run four monitors off the HDMI and USB-C ports. And that's something new to enter my testing regime. Look at that, boys and girls, quad display action. It's enough to make a grown girl cry. <laughs> There's been a cool trend lately of using magnetic panels for easy access to memory and storage. Well, the NAB9 is the easiest yet. Press the two points on the front and up pops the lid. A 2.5 inch storage drive can be attached to the top lid and connected with the cable provided. Oh, that's new. Looks like the Gen 4 NVMe drive has a tiny fan on it along with a heatsink. A MediaTek card handles Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth. There's DDR4-3200 memory included, and that's about it. All right, so if you buy the memory storage bundle, you'll get Windows 11 Pro pre-installed. Apart from removing the requirement to sign in with a Microsoft account when setting it up, it looks like the rest of the Windows image hasn't been messed with. And just to make sure, I ran a scan with Malwarebytes, which came up clean. With the bare bones option, you'll install whatever OS you like, such as Ubuntu, which works fine off the USB drive. And now, let's jump into the benchmarks. 
The Mini's Forum Nab 9 doesn't have the fastest single core result, but it does pretty well against the competition. In multi-core, it's one of the highest Intel performers, only being beaten by the next generation flagship as you'd expect. In video encoding, it nabbed third spot out of all the Intel Minis tested so far, with the GMK Tech Knuckbox K7 in performance mode slightly edging it out. Shame about the fan noise on that Mini. Intel's biggest weakness is the iGPU for gaming, and the i9, while still decent, is far behind AMD's latest efforts. It performs as well as the other top tier 12th gen Intel CPUs. DDR5 probably could have pushed it a bit more, but would also have resulted in a high price tag. So, the i9-12900HK is on the higher side of my benchmark CPU stack and around the middle for graphics. The Gen 4 NVMe SSD performs above Gen 3 speeds in sequential read and write, but it's still a ways off the fastest Gen 4 drives. Intel CPUs do much better in multimedia and video editing compared to AMD, thanks to Intel's QuickSync hardware decoder. It's pretty damn awesome in Adobe Premiere, and the NAB9 can handle my 4K project without issue. Of course, AMD CPUs are far ahead in gaming, but the 12900HK can still do a bit if you stick to esports and emulation. I did mention at the start of the video how minis can have powerful CPUs and fall flat on their faces, if they had them, because of their cooling and power limiting issues. So to show you what I mean, I'm throwing in the Geekom IT13 i9, which had cooling issues for comparison. CSGO performs a bit better on the NAB9, a pretty consistent 80 to 100 FPS. In Dota 2, the NAB9 is far ahead. Wow, 30 to 40 frames higher. Ruination. In Valorant, the two are pretty much equal. While League of Legends is again better on the NAB9. Forza Horizon 5 is a win for the IT-13, around a 7% frame rate increase. And a smaller margin in God of War. Like Dota 2, GDA 5 is again doing much better on the NAB9. Emulation is almost identical between the two minis. And if you're thinking about Xbox 360 emulation, you should quickly mind wipe yourself. It just doesn't work properly with Intel graphics and gives slideshow-like performance. In the BIOS, Advanced tab, and then ACPI, you'll find the settings such as Restory on Power Loss, my favorite. The power and performance option is important if you want to run the Mini using a 100 watt USB-C power supply or monitor. You'll probably need to drop it by at least 10 watts to avoid random power offs. And that's because the NAB9 can draw up to 112 watts maximum. Idle power draw sits at around 13. CPU temperature maxed out at 85 watts, which is impressive, but thermal throttling does kick in at this temp. What impressed me the most is the noise levels. Out of the top tier minis, 
This is one of the quietest under load, but still maintains decent performance and CPU temp. So, good job there. The heatsink and fan on the Gen 4 NVMe storage keeps the drive away from high temps and thermal throttling performance. So, to summarize, what I like about the Mini's Forum Nab 9 is its price, which is very appealing. The overall design is nice, and that includes its aesthetics, ease of upgradability, and metal chassis. Fan noise is lower than most top tier Minis. I'm really happy to see a small power supply as well. However, it would have been nice to include at least one USB 4 port, and same with DDR5, but a few percent graphics performance increase is probably not worth the extra dollars. Gaming performance is lacking compared to AMD, but this is Intel's fault and not Mini's forum. Overall, not too much to complain about. When you take the price, performance, cooling, and noise levels into account, this is the best high-end Intel Mini I've reviewed in a long while. So if you're looking for some top-tier Intel CPU action and don't need USB 4, the Mini's forum NAB9 is a very good option. But you know what's also a very good AMD option? The Rayatan Alloy 9, which you can check out right here. Cheers!